If there's one thing that bothers me when I watch football, it's when fans say that the referees cost them the game or that fouls or penalties are what caused the outcome. And to me, that's ridiculous because there's a bunch of factors that lead to the overall outcome of the game. And a lot of times we just use referees as a scapegoat to deflect from our own failures. So some people on the internet, after watching that Ohio State and Clemson game, wanted to say the refs are to blame for Ohio State's loss. And I'm here to tell you that's completely false. Ohio State did this to themselves and Clemson played a good game. This game could have been 28 to zero within the first quarter and a half of the game. And I'm gonna show you why that's the case and why Ohio State lost this game themselves and the refs didn't have any part of that. So the first thing I'm gonna show you, I wanna show you three plays and it's gonna break down everything you need to know. So in the first quarter, 12 minutes, 15 seconds left, Ohio State's in the shotgun with J.K. Dobbins set to his right. They have four wide receivers, three of them are to the left and one of them to the right side. The three are in a bunch formation. Clemson's in a 4-2-5, playing man coverage across the board. Clemson sends six people on the rush. The Ohio State team picks it up fairly well to start out, uh, but three of the four receiving options are covered really well here. And even the fourth one that I'm going to mention, he's covered initially, but he actually can break through and Justin Fields could throw this ball. So Fields should attempt this throw. The tight end is running on an in route in the middle of the end zone. Like I said, if this is an accurate throw, this is a touchdown. You have to put it out in front of your tight end and high so that he can like catch it away from the defender who is by him. As soon as he makes the break, and not even who the guy was covering him, Simmons, could stop this play. Instead, Justin Fields bails out to his left and he tries to scramble, but he is unable to because of the pursuit. So he throws a low percentage pass at the feet of his receiver who is covered up. This is a missed opportunity for a touchdown. It's at seven points off the board. They settle for a field goal here. Now, the next play I'm going to show you is in the second quarter as well. 14 minutes and 21 seconds left. Um, then the shotgun formation, J.K. Dobbins is set to his right. They go three wide receivers, two of them are to the right, and one of them is to the left. Clemson showed man coverage here with six blitzers. They only rushed five of them, played more of a two-man shell here with some zone with the linebackers. So it was a good scheme, but ultimately it didn't matter because Ohio State got what it wanted. J.K. Dobbins on a wheel route, unimpeded to the end zone. The linebacker number 35 underneath couldn't get there, and Simmons was too far away to make a play on the ball. So Justin Fields makes sure to throw this ball with some touch on an arc for his shorter running back heading into the end zone, and he did mostly well. Ideally, you don't want your running back having to jump for the catch, so maybe you could have put a little bit more touch on it or thrown it at a lower trajectory. But Dobbins still gets to it fairly easily. Like a receiver, he jumps up, kind of carousel with both hands, like he's pulling it in over shoulder. The problem is that he didn't maintain the catch all the way through the ground. And so you got to think about it almost like the Calvin Johnson rule in the NFL, where when you catch the ball in the end zone, and if you fall down, you still have to maintain possession as if a receiver does when they're heading to the ground. And as you notice, when he hit the ground, his hand had the ball in it, the right hand touched the ground and the ball moved and kind of filtered out a little bit and he had to pull it back in. At that point, they're gonna call that no catch. And that shows you how much of a game and inches football is. If J.K. Dobbins had threw that ball six inches shorter on a shorter trajectory or at a lower arc, J.K. Dobbins wouldn't have to jump for it and he might be able to just walk in for a touchdown. If J.K. Dobbins just pulls that ball in earlier and holds it to his chest rather than, you know, allowing his hand to go out as if he's trying to steady himself on the ground, he's not used to catching the ball like a wide receiver, then it's probably still would have been a touchdown. But instead, we're looking at an incomplete pass and another missed touchdown, which is another seven points. So you're already counting this 14 total points that Ohio State left on the field that Clemson had nothing to do with, or the referees. And this is the last play I'm gonna show you. It's the second quarter, seven minutes and 36 seconds left. They're in the shotgun. J.K. Dobbins is set to the left. Clemson's in somewhat of a 3-3-5 here, and they rush five people. Two linebackers are out of coverage here because of the two rushers. So this is a perfect situation for Ohio State because they are running a running back screen to the left side where the right outside linebacker just vacated on a blitz. And his blockers are doing a good job of already you know, occupying the space that they need for the running back. Just look at number 52, number 71, and number 73 up the field already pushing their guys out of the way or posturing themselves to have the leverage for good blocks. So Dobbins is all alone as he leaks out of the backfield and Justin Fields feeds him the ball to the left side. He lets the ball fall right through his fingertips, through his hands as he starts looking upfield early, trying to figure out where he's going to run. And that's a mistake that you don't make. If you watch football for any long number of time, you've heard any commentator say, 
the wide receiver or so and so tried to run before they caught the ball. And then whenever you take your eyes off the ball, concentration errors will lead to a drop. And so that mental error erases what most likely would have been a touchdown. If you look at that play, if you pause it, you can see that there's room for J.K. Dobbins to like catch that ball, get up field, cut in between a blocker, and uh, beat any of the DBs to that end zone. We've seen how fast he is. He's outrun the Clemson defense already. So this would have been another touchdown. That's another seven points. That would have been 21 points total. Those three plays are 21 points that Ohio State missed out on within the first quarter and a half of the college football playoff semifinals. They left 21 points on the field. They got nine out of the 21, so I guess you can say they left 12 on the field. They got nine because they kicked three field goals instead. But if they got these three touchdowns, that would be 28 to zero. They would have a 28 to zero lead within the first quarter and a half of the game. I can even show you three more plays that Ohio State missed out on that was going on during the same sequence of events. Um, And one was a great play by Clemson, but overall, you just have to stop blaming the referees and acknowledge that Ohio State did this to themselves. 